Welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 84 of ASP.NET video series. In part 82 of this video series, we discussed the basics of application pools and in part 83, we discussed about achieving applications isolation using application pools. In this session, we're going to discuss about configuring different levels of security for different application pools. Let's understand that with an example. First, you know, I'm going to create within C drive, I have this data folder and within this folder, I'm going to create a new text document. Let's change the name of this one to application one data. I'm going to change the extension from txt to dot XML. Okay, change that. Open that with notepad. So open with notepad. And let's copy the XML that I have. If you look at this, it's some countries data where we have country ID, name, and the continent to which it belongs. I have four countries there, so I'm going to copy that and paste that into that application one data.xml. Save it, close the file, and then let's go back to this data folder, make a copy of this file, and rename that to application to data.xml. So if you look at this, both of the files has got the same data. It's just that I have two files, uh, you know, with application one data.xml and application two data.xml. Okay, now let's flip to Visual Studio. Now here I have an ASP.NET web application project with name web application one. And on this web form, I have a grid view control, a text, uh, a file upload control, and a button control. The text on the button is read data and label control here. Okay, so let me double click this button control. Now look at this on the page load, what we are doing, we are printing the name of the vendor's identity that is used to execute this application code. Okay, and to do that, we're using the vendor's identity class that's present in system.security.principal namespace. Okay, all right, so now what we want to do now, when we run this application, I will be able to select a file using this file upload control, you know, either this file or this file. And then when we actually click the read data button, we should read the data from the respective XML files and display that within the grid view control. Let's see how to do that. Okay, so if, so the ID of the file upload control is file upload one, if that has file, that's going to return true. This has file is a Boolean property. It will return true if it has a file. Else, if we don't have a file, then in the label control, we want to show a message to the user saying, please select a file first. Please select a file first. Okay. And then if, uh, you know, the user has selected a file, then what we want to do, we want to create a data set. And by the way, the data set is present in system.data namespace. So we have imported that. So let's say data set ds is equal to new data set. And let's use the read XML method to read the XML data from that folder. So ds.readXML, and I'm going to give the absolute path here, c colon backslash backslash, and the folder name is data. So backslash backslash, and to that path, we are going, going to append the file name. So file upload one dot file name. So we will get the file name from the file upload control. So after we read the data into the data set, we are going to set that as the data source for the grid view control. So grid view one dot data source is equal to data set and finally invoke the data bind method. Okay. And then we're going to set the label one dot text to empty just in case if there is anything within the label, we want to wipe that out. Okay, so very simple code. Um, let's go ahead and run that. But before that, let's configure a virtual directory within IIS. Okay, and the easiest way to do that is to go to this web application project, go to the properties, and then within the web tab, instead of using the Visual Studio built in development server, I'm going to use a local IIS server and then click create virtual directory. So within IIS, this should create a virtual directory with name web application one. Okay, open IIS and to do that, click on start, type run, and within the run window, type INET MGR, and then click OK. So that should open up IIS. And within IIS, you know, within this default websites folder, refresh that, we should see an application created. Okay, now let's go ahead and create an application pool first. 
okay so these are the built-in application pools let me add an application pool and I'm gonna call this application one pool and let's select the dotnet framework version as 4.0 click OK so we have application one pool there and it doesn't have any applications at the moment so we want to associate this application with that application pool and how do we do that right click on the application manage application advanced settings and here you know we have the application pool click on the ellipsis button and from the drop down list select the application one pool so that's it so we have associated now this web application one with application one pool okay now let's go to web application two so I have another web application two project created here on this web form I have the same set of controls and when I click this button control you know let's change the text basically to uh, press F4 and change the text to read data and then empty the text property of this label control okay so this application is also going to do essentially the same thing so I'm I'm actually going to copy the code from here and paste it in web application 2 so we have two applications doing the same thing okay so data set is in is present in system dot data namespace so let's go ahead and import that so system dot data okay so I have web application 2 and web application 1 doing exactly the same thing okay and we have two files here application 1 data.xml and application 2 data.xml now with an IIS let's go ahead and create another application pool with name application 2 pool so add application pool and I'm gonna call this application 2 pool and let's select .NET framework version 4.0 okay so we have two application pools and let's create uh, you know an application with an IIS and to do that we can do that directly from Visual Studio as well so let's go to the properties of the web application project and within the properties go to the web tab I'm gonna select use local IIS web server click on create virtual directory this should automatically create the virtual directory with an IIS refresh the default website folder there and we should see web application 2 and we want to associate this to this application to pool at the moment there are no applications you can see that's zero at the moment but we want to associate web application 2 with application 2 pool and to do that right click on that select manage application go to advanced settings and we can change the application pool by clicking on this ellipsis button from there select application 2 pool okay so I hope you understand the setup at the moment at the moment we have two web application projects web application 1 and web application 2 and these two web applications are deployed to IIS and within IIS I have two virtual directories here and these two applications are mapped to the application pools here so web application 1 which is pointing to web application 1 on the hard disk is now mapped to application 1 pool and web application 2 is mapped to application 2 pool now let's run one of the applications okay let's run web application 1 so when we run this we should be able to select the file from the file upload control so no file chosen at the moment choose file and from C data I'm gonna select application 1 data click on read XML so it's using okay by the way look at what's this doing this is still running of the built-in Visual Studio we don't want that we want it to use the local IIS so save the settings we haven't saved that's why it was using the Visual Studio built-in so press a control F5 so the application should run and once it loads up let's select a file application one data.xml read data so we have read the data and displayed it and look at the identity it's using application one pool IIS app pool backslash application one pool now let me select application two data file and click on read data look at that I again get you know I basically web application one is able to select both application one data .xml as well as application two data .xml. and along the same lines if I run web application two it is also going to be able to select both of the files you know 
it 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 also reads data from both of the files now i don't want that web application 1 should be able to access only application 1 dot data application 1 data dot xml and web application 2 should be able to access only application 2 dot uh, 2 data dot xml you know web application 1 shouldn't be able to access application 2 data dot xml okay so look at that application 2 it's able to read data from application 1 data and I can do that with 2 data as well okay so basically I want to prevent that web application 1 access only this file web application 2 access only this file if web application 2 tries to access this file we should throw an exception let's see how to do that okay now the most important thing to notice here look at that Web application 2 is running using the application 2 pool identity and web application 1 is running using application 1 pool identity. So that's that's the key to solving this problem. So obviously what we do, we will set security to this Windows identity account. So I go to the file system here. I select application 1 data.xml. At the moment, by default, this file is accessible by both the accounts. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to right click on that. Okay, let's go here, copy the name of the account from here. So that's the name of the account or the Windows identity that is used to execute the application code. So what I'm going to do, so that is IS application one pool. So web application one should have access only to application one data.xml. It shouldn't be able to access application two data.xml. So I right click on that, go to properties and within the security tab, I'm going to edit that, add, and within this window, paste the account name and click on check names. Look at that, there is that name. Click OK. Now here in the permissions list, I'm going to deny permissions for application one identity to this application two data.xml. Click OK. It gives you a warning because deny permissions will have, uh, will take precedence over any other permissions that are already there. So I click OK. OK, so we are explicitly denying access to application one identity. OK, along the same lines, what I'm going to do for application one, we will deny access to application two identity. So I'm going to select that, go to properties, security, click on the edit button and click add, paste the name there. But this time it's going to be application two pool check names click OK and deny access click apply S on the security warning click OK and OK so that's it now let me go ahead and run let me close this window let me run the application web application one once again so when we run this let me select the file I'm going to select application one data so this is application one accessing application one data that XML I click read data very good it should read that but then let me select application 2 data.xml click read data look at that I get an error system dot unauthorized exception because we have explicitly denied access to you know application 2 identity for this file that's why we get that error message look at that we are able to control security based on the account that is used to execute the application code okay now showing this hello screen of death to the end users is bad we can easily catch this exception and show a meaningful error message to the user and how do we do that within the code you know wrap this code in a try catch block so I'm going to put that in a try block and a catch block okay actually I have that typed just to save some time here So obviously the exception that we have seen on that yellow screen is system dot unauthorized exception. If that's the case, catch that and then the label display a message saying you do not have access to this file. If it is any other exception apart from that, we just display a message saying an unexpected error has occurred. Please contact administrator. So let's save that and run it now. So this is application one. This will be able to access only application one data.xml. So reading fine. Let me select application two.xml. Read data. We get that message. You do not have access to this file. Along the same lines, if we run web application two, as you might expect, this application now, look at that. That's the identity that is used to execute this application 
code and we said you know for for that identity deny access to application one data dot xml file okay so choose file if i select application one data dot xml click that i straight away get the error okay and again to hide this error you know we can use the try catch block look at the exception system dot unauthorized exception on the other hand if i select application two data dot xml read data it reads fine Okay, so in this session, we have discussed about configuring different levels of security for different application pools. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.